Hello again. Garmin's newest bike computer, the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar, claims 45 hours of battery life. So in the summer, I put this to the test to see if that mammoth claim is hopeful or achievable. If you're looking for a full review of this unit, I'll be doing one soon. It'll eventually be posted at the end of this. A video showing my initial thoughts in comparison to the Edge 1030 it will be linked at the end. This one is about the game-changing battery life question, which really is important because it could well be a determining factor as to whether anybody actually buys this thing or not. The most important point to bear in mind is that the single biggest thing which will drain your battery is the brightness of the screen. I do prefer mine to be fairly bright, but to have any hope of achieving the 45 hours, you must have the setting on auto brightness. I let the unit sense the ambient light and adjust accordingly. I did this ride in July, shortly after purchasing the unit. I set the brightness at maximum just to see what the effect would be. At the end, I was left with just 20% battery. I didn't used to use auto brightness, but after a while you don't really notice it. It reminds me of how I thought I'd never cope with coffee without sugar. After a couple of weeks, it's no problem. A bit of a weird analogy, that one. Garmin head units are getting ever more sophisticated with loads of options and ways of interacting with it during the ride. So your personal configuration on the unit and your interactions with it during the ride will have a direct bearing on battery life. Here's a table that gives four different configurations. It says you could get up to 90 hours out of it. The first two columns though, hardly make use of the unit that you've just shelled out a significant amount of your hard earned cash for. Yes, battery saver mode will get you 70 plus hours maybe, which is good to know if you're in the wilderness without any hope of charging it. But generally, if you buy this, leaving the screen blank on battery saving mode isn't really an option, is it? Surely you'd actually want to use it, wouldn't you? In my testing, I was in the right-hand column with all the power-hungry settings, except the aforementioned ravenously power-hungry maximum brightness, of course. Note as well that the right-hand column suggests a target of only 35 hours. So I was either going to fail miserably or Garmin are being cautious with their claim. A few of these reasons for battery drain are worth noting. Multiband GPS is more accurate, but demands more battery. Pairing sensors with your unit uses more, as does how often the sensors interact with the unit. So I was riding with heart rate monitor, Varia radar, speed sensor, and my electronic DI2 gear shifting, all constantly transferring data. So plenty of notifications, especially from the radar, and plenty of user interactions from me during the ride. Finally, if and how your navigating makes a difference too. So if following a course, rather than just free riding, you have the turn-by-turn -turn notifications using more battery, and having the screen on the map page uses more because the unit needs to keep refreshing and redrawing the map as you progress. So I had it on map screen most of the time. So in August, I began a series of rides without charging it in between. And here's how it turned out. The first ride then was on the 22nd of August on a fairly hot sunny day. And these are the screenshots taken from the edge unit in the ride summary. We need to be measuring how long the unit is switched on though. So ignore the time because I was faffing a lot and filming for another video. So I was out with the unit switched on for around six hours. The time you see here is just the actual pedaling time. You can see the solar charging effect at the bottom apparently gave me back the equivalent of 2 hours 12 minutes and 57 seconds of battery gain at 40% intensity. This isn't 100% because the unit is not always facing the sun and is in and out of shade etc when you're going through the trees and whatnot. I doubt you'd ever get 100% on a long ride as you're always changing direction unless you're going through the Sahara Desert in one direction. The key statistic here is that after this six hour ride, I had 94% battery left. Four days later, this ride took six hours and 30 minutes as I was sightseeing around the center of Paris. It was overcast for most of the day and because of the constant traffic most of the time, 
the Varaya radar was working overtime, constantly sending notifications to the head unit. So it's interesting to see the combined effect of less solar charging, but a high level of sensor usage, resulting in finishing with 78% battery. Ride 3 on the 1st of September was a cloudy day, and I was out for around 4 hours and 25 minutes, with 66% battery left at the end. Ride 4 was a completely different affair. It was an indoor trainer ride fundraising for my adopted charity. So, completely different demands on the unit's battery. The only sensor was the smart trainer that the bike was attached to, although that does send a lot of information to the head unit regarding speed, cadence and power all the time the pedals are turning. But no navigation and no Varia radar. In total, the unit was searched on for 8 hours. And God knows how I got a couple of minutes battery gain. Obviously, a chink of sunlight came through the window, I guess. So I used 13% of the battery on that day, taking it down to around the halfway point at 53%. Next day, another cloudy 53-mile ride with me out for around four hours. 8% of battery used, so 45% left at the end. Then a series of similar rides. Ride 6, weather cloudy and out for around 3 hours 45 minutes, taking me down to 38%. You can see on these cloudy days, there isn't a great deal of help from solar charging. But let's not forget the times that we probably all had when the battery went flat before a ride was finished. And that small 10 to 20 minute boost that we're getting here would have saved the day back then. Ride 7, almost the same as the last one, similar mileage, and time elapsed, leaving me with 29%. Rides 8 and 9, using 9% and 8% respectively, on cloudy days, and now I'm down to just 12%. By this time, probably for the first time ever, I felt confident starting a ride with just 12% battery on my Garmin. So I set off on ride 10. It was intermittent sun for four hours, leaving me with just 6% at the end, which remarkably, at this rate, would be enough for another 20 mile or so ride, but I didn't push it and called the experiment a day. The result of the test is that in 10 rides, I took the battery from 100% down to 6% without charging. I can confirm then the Garmin claim of 45 hours is achievable. I managed to use it in that time for 47 hours and 55 minutes since the last charge. Quite often when switching it on before a ride, I noticed the battery level was two to 4% higher than when I switched it off after the previous ride. I can imagine that might be something to do with the gain through solar charging, but I can't be sure. So basically as a guide, you're looking at 2% per hour used. And that's with plenty of interaction with sensors and me switching between screens whilst using it on the bike. And of course, if you're in much sunnier and hot climbs, you're gonna do better than that. I remind you that the auto brightness settings is key here to get these kind of results. But if you're like me and you prefer it a bit brighter, well, I don't intend to do many rides, well, i.e. none, of 10 to 50 hours duration. On the basis that I can recharge after each ride, I'll do that and have a slightly brighter screen. Saving the knowledge that if I ever do a multi-day event, I can switch on auto brightness and that's one less gadget I need to worry about charging. Well, I hope that helps you and was of interest. And if it has, it would really help my channel if you would give the video a thumbs up and subscribe below for more cycling content. A full review of the Garmin 1040 Solar will be here soon, but my first impressions and comparison to the 1030 when I first bought it will be on the video here. So thanks for watching, happy cycling, and I'll see you soon.